think that site is Artifacts. really important to us because of our family mm -hmm. heritage. It was um, the lands where our great grandfather, Gardner Goodridge, and our great grandmother, Polly, Chi Chi Yell, that's where they made their, you know, they homesteaded that land, as well as other family members. Um, Polly, Chi Chi Yell, her sister, and her husband lived right across the, the waterway there. So um, I think before natural resources came involved, you know, we were Jennifer and involved. I would um, often visit that land just because we felt like we were, you know, closest to our ancestors, and um, and and uh, it would bring us back to our more of our traditional ways being there on site. This about restoration uh, is a really cool project looking at um, expanding a lot of tidal habitat uh, that can be used by rearing salmon. One of the problems we have in this area is the levee systems that were established in the late 1800s. Uh, we've had ever since then uh, decreasing habitat for salmon as development has encroached upon them. And this is taking a small step, a chunk of that habitat back uh, for the salmon to use. This is an area that has been used by the Stillhomish tribe for many thousands of years. Uh, this was a very important area uh, to tribal members. Uh, back before white settlers came here, you didn't go to the grocery store. Uh, the grocery store was the salt water and that was where you were able to get most of your food. And if you were to come to Zisaba before 1880, you would have seen cedar all the way down to the water. It was everywhere. Uh, the whole area, if you look at the Coast Guard key sheets, show how forested this area was. It was wild. And it was full of habitat. It was alive. And so we're trying to take one little piece of that. And get that back. We've been, you know, brought up to respect our elders, to respect our ancestors, and I think by supporting the dikes coming down and bringing our land back to its natural state is, that is our way of respecting our ancestors. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I was just excited to see it, like how it was when our ancestors lived there. I became involved in this project originally because Sky Miller of Cardno was working on some of the design and permitting for the project with the Stiligwamish tribe. During the survey, we found um, an archaeological site. It was a uh, part of the historic homestead that was on the property. Um, we just found the, the surface area, the surface scatter for the homestead. Um, we didn't find any um, other, other tribally significant resources. Um, and we didn't find any pre-contact archaeology. And um, we also found items such as golf balls. We still have you know, some materials there, but, but both of the inadvertent discoveries that we did have were determined not eligible um, for the National Register as well. Um, you know, we're, working on ZISPA was really, really an interesting project. It was great to work with the tribe and to get to know them really well. It's such a rich area in history and tribal use that it's just, it's a really special place. The restoration aspect and the what is to come um, was really exciting for us. Our Chinook recovery plan, which was developed in 2005 with a lot of partners in the watershed, and we came up with the list of limiting factors that are reducing the productivity and abundance of Chinook in the still Guamish. So we're looking at things like sediment, riparian areas, large wood. Estuaries was a bottleneck for Chinook salmon. In, uh, we hope to see more estuary habitat open up that fish can use. The estuary as a bottleneck is really a, an area where we can get a lot of return of adult fish and they can spawn successfully, they can reproduce, the young will come out of the gravel, migrate downstream and then there's not enough estuary for those fish to make the journey they need to make. So. 
think the best way to look at it is think of it as a nursery. It's where the fish are coming out of the gravel, migrate downstream, try to fatten themselves up before they head out into the open ocean and compete with all the other fish out there. So estuary is like a nursery for the fish. The project at Zisabo was challenging um, on several fronts. Um, if, if you've ever been out to the site, you realize it's in the middle, kind of in the middle of a pretty built environment. It's right across from the city of Stanwood. It's right in the middle of um, agricultural operations that are, are pretty intensive. And so working in that sort of environment, there was a lot of um, concern that restoring uh, tidal access and river access to the property could impact those stakeholders. And so they were pretty nervous. And so. We tried to build trust with those stakeholders and meet with them over um, time, but it took some time. There was, um, there was a period where we weren't sure if the project was gonna go forward. I mean, they, there was maybe the talk of legal challenge and, and that sort of thing. And we really worked with the stakeholders to understand what their concerns were. And then we worked with Cardinal and the engineers to make sure that those concerns were dealt with in a way that, um, that was robust. And we felt confident that we could promise to be good neighbors and not, not impact their, their interests. So the day we had planned to, to breach the dikes and let the tides back into Zisaba also happened to correspond with probably the strongest windstorm of the year. And it was steady 30, 40 mile an hour winds, gusts over 50. Um, it was a high tide any, anyway, um, which we wanted because we wanted to, to uh, have that low tide that is associated with the high tide. So we, we needed the low low, but the high high was about 16 or 18 inches higher than the engineers had forecast. And with the wind and the tidal surge, the storm surge, um, it was a little bit, things went a little sideways. So we had only planned to work on one side of the project and it was separated by a berm that ran down the middle. But it was pretty obvious about three quarters of the way through the tide that that berm wasn't gonna hold the water back. And the, the elevation that we thought the tide was gonna get to was was definitely lower than what the tide was going to get to. And so it started spilling over into the other side where we weren't working, and that has a, that a, had a scrambling a bit. But the contractor, Trimac, they came up with, and, and Dan and Sky, uh, the engineers at Cardno, came up with a plan to kind of modify the next few days of operations to deal with that extra water that then was trapped in the site. So we had to let that water out before we could finish all the rest of the breaching around the perimeter of the site. Um, but at the time, it kind of, kind of, I guess recalibrated everyone to what Mother Nature can do. And uh, it was a good reminder that she's in charge. Uh, we're a team of river engineers and scientists. Uh, more than half of what we do is salmon habitat restoration in the Pacific Northwest. Zizaba is a project. It used to be an estuary. Uh, for the last hundred and some years, it's been diked and drained and farmed. Uh, so my role was as engineer and my team of uh, geomorphologists and fish biologists permit specialists, and archaeologists, and design engineers, and hydraulic modelers uh, looked at this site to see how we could uh, replicate what was there in the past to create a uh, maximum amount of habitat that we could. So in order to create habitat, we're going to breach the dike in several locations uh, to flood it twice a day with the tides to recreate that estuary. As important as restoring the habitat was the protection of our neighbors. Zisaba was the first major tidal wetland project that the tribe uh, has undertaken. And so uh, there's a, a goal in the Chinook Recovery Plan of several thousand acres of tidal wetland restoration in the Stillaguamish Delta. So we're going to need to be doing quite a few more projects in the future. And so this was great experience for the tribe and for our staff of the tribe on, on how to, to undertake these projects successfully and, and work with the local community, work with the stakeholders and their concerns and really come up with a project that um, protects their interests, um, builds trust across those, those stakeholder relationships, but yet still does something really um, significant for fish and wildlife populations that makes progress towards those ambitious goals.